everyone, it's Evelyn, and in this week's video, you're going to see that the seed room is going through a slow transition away from seedlings and into other things that help me with my flower farming. Now, the seedlings aren't going to disappear for a while because there's still seeds that I start in May, and of course I still have plants in the seed room where it's not, although these are almost ready to get hardened off, but I have some others down below that aren't quite ready to go out and start the hardening off process. And we'll go over those in a minute. But first I just want to go over the seeds that I'm going to be starting in May still. Now if you've watched my previous videos, you will know that I start my sunflower seeds indoors because the bird pressure would take care of them if I planted them outside. So it's much easier to start them indoors. So I do 100 sunflower seeds once a week. And the four that I do, I'll just put up on the screen here. And they're all from Sunflower Selections, and they're all Pro Cuts. And Sunflower Selections is actually the creator of the Pro Cut. So while you can buy Pro Cuts elsewhere, when you buy them from Sunflower Selections, you're buying them directly from the source. So the other thing that I want to start in May, but later on in May, is another batch of lettuce. So I'm going to start with another batch of butter lettuce. Another batch of loose leaf lettuce, specifically the Strunken Lady variety, which I really, really like. And another batch of Coastal Star Romaine lettuce, which does really, really well here. And since I'm on the coast, that makes sense because it's called Coastal Star. There's one other thing that I didn't think I'd have to start this uh, in May, and it's some more Jack B. Little Pumpkins. And that's because it, this is a new seed company for me. And while I'm used to getting almost 90% German, 90% or better germination from West Coast Seeds, which is what I normally buy, I couldn't get Jack B. Little Pumpkins from West Coast Seeds at the time. So I bought them from a new seed company. And I started six seeds and I only got three up, which isn't great. So I'm going to do um, another batch of six and hopefully I'll get another three up. <laughs> So those are the seeds that I still have to start in my seed room. And now I'm going to show you the seeds that I actually have in my seed room. And to do that, I'm going to have to turn the camera around. So you could see that I had um, behind my head these bigger seedlings. These are all tomatoes, and I've got 12 of them. They've been potted up to, I did two into one gallon pots just to see if there would be a difference. Of course, I potted them up a little sooner than these ones. And then I did the other 10. And this is where I got... 12 out of 12 germination. So the other 10 I did in these smaller pots. Now I'm not planting 12. There's just my husband and myself. and We don't need 12 tomato plants. But these are my absolute favorite tomatoes. They're called Health Kit Tomatoes. They are from... Hmm, now I've forgotten the name of the seed company. I'll put it up on the screen. It's the only place in Canada I can get them. TNT Seeds. That's what they're called. TNT Seeds. And because I love these tomatoes so much... And because they're really, really hard to get the seeds for, or the plants, I'm going to sell them up at my roadside flower wagon when I have space to put them up there, which should probably be by the end of this week. Now, other seedlings that I have is this, I've got my Cosmos started. I started them late because realistically I grow them mostly for the foliage. But in case I want to use some of the flowers I had there I bought double clicks and these are snow puff and right below them I have the pink ones what are they called can't remember I'll put it on the screen <laughs> here's something that's interesting I got a sunflower growing in with my uh, with my cosmos and this looks like a white light you can tell by the color of the leaves it's just it's a slightly softer green than the other sunflowers so that looks like a white light sunflower so just if you want to know what this is for so this kind of sags in the middle so I've got this here so it raises the level so that it's nice and flat so that when I pour water into the trays uh, it doesn't all run to one side and I just keep jugs of water handy for that so over here with the domes on it these are sunflowers that I literally just started yesterday so today's Monday today Monday no today's Tuesday pardon me so I actually started them two days ago, and um, I do that. I start the seeds every Sunday. I soak the seeds on Saturday for 24 hours, and then I plant them on Sunday. These are the weeks before. They need to actually go outside 
and uh, harden off because uh, I'm behind on that. I'm behind on planting the previous week's sunflowers, so the spot that they would normally go on is full of those. Look what else I got popping up in here. That is an anemone, and I'm guessing it's a Bordeaux. So that'll be fun. I got another anemone there to plant in. But you can see here, see these sunflowers? They have the red stems with the darker green leaves. And then you have these pale stems with the paler leaves. That's one of the ones, I believe, that was over, where was that? Here. Oops. And But then on the other tray, you've also got red stems with green leaves and pale stems and pale. So it's either gold light or white night. One of those two. Anyway, below that, I have... I only got 50% germination on my cucumbers, so I've got three cucumbers, so I might actually have to start... I don't know if I need more than three cucumbers. I might just leave it at that. But here you can see my Jacoby Little Pumpkins. I didn't even get 50%. There's only two. I got two only out of six. Pretty poor. Now the Baby Boo, which I did get from West Coast Seeds, I've got all six. This one's coming up a little later than the rest, but all six holes are are coming up with a pumpkin, and that's what I was expecting here, but I didn't get. The zucchinis, I only had three duds out of the eight that I started, but that was really, really old seed. Here are the other five. They are just doing fantastic. I've potted them up because I'm not ready to start hardening them off yet. They do better, because we still get cool nights, so they do better uh, snug in my seed room, which does not have the heater plugged in anymore, but because this wall, and this wall are all completely below grade. You see the concrete goes right up to the top. The mean temperature in here stays pretty good. So without any heat, you can see it's 18 degrees in here right now. And I believe it only goes down to 17 at night, which is uh, pretty good. So don't need the heat on in here for that. So those are all the seedlings that I've got on the go right now. But clearly I have a lot more shelves that I can do things with. So this shelf up here, what I've got going on, does this look orange? Uh, in the, in the uh, light from here, it really looks orange over here, but if I take it away, you'll see it's actually yellow. And those are kale flowers. I used this one for the test because it uh, had kind of broken and was wonky, so I'm using it for the test. I've got the dates that I put them in these little milk containers glass milk container. So I started all of these on May 5th. So I've got Candy Tuft. I've got a hosta leaf. Now I will say different hostas have different um, boz lives. I've got bluebells, which you can see is quite a bit more blue than what it looks like over here. I have an astilbe frond because I just love astilbe fronds in bouquets. And really, that's that's all I got right now in the garden. It's um, it's not a time where I have much in the way of flowers. There's one other thing that I have, and that I actually started on May 3rd because we had a really cool Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. So I was able to get some giant Solomon seal up at the flower wagon. And so I started the vase life on May 3rd. But if you look at it now, it's 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 just started to sag today. This one has, it has been in the seed room the whole time. And uh, today is the, I believe it's the 7th. It's Tuesday, whatever it is. I cut this on Friday. So it only had a uh, four-day uh, vase life. But if it, was in, if it was a sunny day, it would have out in the flower wagon, it would flop instantly. It's not, it's, it's a shade plant, so it doesn't want to be in the heat of the sun or in the direct sun. So that's what I've got on these shelves here. Now, we're going to turn around and I'm going to show you what I got on the shelves on the other side. Just a sec. So we already saw that I've got my 12 health kick tomato plants up here. On the other side of this, and, and I've kept this here for catching water because if I'm watering here, I can spill. But I've taken the one off of here so that I have a nice flat surface. And what I have on this side is big vases. These vases, most of them, not this one, for example, because the opening is too small. This is good for something like Giant Solomon Seal where you can just have two or three really tall things in it. Same as this one. But the rest of them are all good for bouquets. Now, 
I don't put bouquets in them. I put bouquets in my uh, flower flower um, buckets, and at the back of the flower wagon, I'll have the vases with the prices on them, and often somebody will buy the bouquet and the vase. So that's how that works. I don't have very many big vases. I sold most of them last year, so I don't have very many in inventory because I haven't come across much in the way of new ones. What I have here is I just have price tags. You know, these ones are blank here. I've got $15 ones. I've got one $10 one for a tiny thing. I've got $45, $40. You know, I just have written out tags from previously, and then um, I use up the ones I've already written, or if I don't have any written out, then I start some new ones. These vases will start from, some of them will be 25 and some of them will be more. So they go up in price from 25 if they're the really big ones, separate from the cost of the bouquet. On the shelf below, you can see I have much smaller. So these vases will all start mostly at $15. And um, they're not all vases. Some of them are just like little creamer jugs, but they're, they're handmade and they're um, absolutely beautiful. So some of them are vintage. This is a uh, green mountain pottery, blue, blue mountain pot, blue mountain pottery. And um, this one doesn't look like a vase, but it is because it's got an opening in the back. So these all, it's the same thing. Um, when I sell my single flowers in pop cans, then at the side of the flower wagon, I'll have three or four of these so that people can buy the single flowers and then a vase to go along with it. And oftentimes, People buy that when they go camping. So on this side, I have bigger vases, higher price point again. Most of these are um, are um, studio pottery and have signatures on the bottom of them. Clearly, that's not studio pottery because that's glass. But um, yeah, so I have quite a few there, as you can see. I put the, probably the first ones I'm going to use in the front, and then and then it goes backwards from there. Down here, I have some bigger vases again. They're not all bigger. Well, no, actually, yeah, because this one could hold a bouquet. I love this vase. Can you see the um, just see the vine that wraps around it all the way? I really, really love that vase. Oops, bang. Don't break it. <laughs> and then we come back to this side, and I've got some that are just really inexpensive vases that would just go for like $10, you know, like this one. That's just a $10 vase. That's just a $10 vase. This will just be 10 bucks. Somebody can buy a pop can with three flowers in it and put one in each of those. That'll just be a $10 vase, but then I have some bigger ones in the back too. So I like having all my vases laid out so that I can see what it is that I want to grab. Then on my workstation here, where I also start my seedlings, I will put flowers down here at this time of year when I'm not doing a ton because I don't have a lot of flowers to do. And then when I've got the arrangement all made, I'll put it up on here, and that will be my backdrop, the concrete wall. And I'll put some examples up on the screen now of uh, how I use this uh, concrete wall as a backdrop to flower arrangements. And that works really well, really well. I really love having the concrete behind the flower arrangements with a little wood shelf below for um, just for a really beautiful textural neutral backdrop to it. Now, on the end of the shelf, I have whatever I have left over from last season, nigella pods. I've got some taller ones. I've got a little bit of yarrow in here. I've got poppy pods, more poppy pods, and uh, a still bee. And this will all get used in the early spring bouquets and flower arrangements. In fact, the dried poppy pods will get used sparingly right up until I have fresh green ones because they really add a beautiful architectural detail to the actual uh, flower arrangements. I'll put a few up on the screen of that so you can see what I mean about how they just add a completely different texture and look to, uh, to a floral bouquet. And I love using them and people love them. And same with the astilbe. It's dry, but it, it adds a nice, it's got a, this is red astilbe, so it's still got a lot of its red color. So even though, but even though it's dry, it looks really nice in fresh bouquets. And, um, and then below here, I just have, you know, pens and pencils, scissors, trash and recycle, just a little bit of extra stuff that I use, the seeds that I just showed you. 
So one of the things about my seed room that makes this a real seamless transition from being absolutely full of plants, and if you haven't seen my uh, April seed room tour, you can check it out up here. And if you look at that, you'll see how absolutely jam crammed this, this room is with seedlings. But it's a seamless, stress-free transition to, to get to where I am today because more, more important to me than a seed schedule is the seed room schedule. I have a very small space that is highly productive for uh, seedlings, seed starting, and everything that comes after that. But in order to make it highly productive and flow smoothly without any backlogs, is by having a seed room schedule. And part of that is created by taking good notes of how your seeds do throughout their time within the seed room. Uh, if you want to check out how I do a seed room schedule, you should check out this video down here. Now what it doesn't have in it is anything to do with May. I start off with uh, the seed room schedule I start talking about in December because that's when I'm doing all the planning. And I go through the do -si doing of everything in here right up until this point. Um, but still, in my head and in my plan, I do have this point already accounted for. It's just, it just wasn't necessarily appropriate for that particular video because people who are watching that want to know more about actual seedlings and how my schedule goes, so I didn't get into the uh, boz testing and the bozes, etc. But that's a really, really good video to watch if you've never considered doing a seed room schedule so you can see how I create mine and if you want to see again what this room looked like it was absolutely jam-packed full of stuff and mostly dahlias check out my uh, uh, April seed room tour bye